Hello everyone, welcome back to ASR, African Stories Realized. This is a full recap of Youngin Season 1, which recently started airing on Showmax. The show follows the lives of teens in the Johannesburg boarding school of Olifant's Fontaine. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Episode 1 begins with an introduction to Olifant's Fontaine and its rowdy students who are returning to school after the holidays. We meet the new girl, Amo from KZN, who gets dropped off by her aunt. She begins navigating her way through the school and makes fast friends with the eccentric Tumelo, who helps Amo find her dorm. She is then introduced to her roommate, Bushe, the head girl of the school and a classic mean girl. After showing Amo to the girls' dorms, Tumelo returned to his dorm where we were introduced to his best friend, Matate, and the show wasted no time letting us know that he was still a virgin. The two boys caught up with each other before linking up with Amo. Matlata immediately started crushing on her which led to an awkward introduction. The three students made their way to the dining hall where all the new girls were being rated by the boys who shouted out their ratings as each girl stepped up to collect their food. When the nervous Amo finally stepped up for her plate, she began receiving low marks like the girls before her. But the episode ends with one of the boys, Kaya, stepping up to defend Amo rating her at 10 in front of the entire dining hall of students, including his girlfriend Bute, who is Amo's roommate. Episode 2 picks up on the first day of school. In the boys' dorms, Matata admits to Tumelo that he is falling hard for Amo. He asks Tumelo to invite Amo on a night out so he can try and make his move. We also find out that the young version is bold enough to sell weed to his peers on campus. Meanwhile, in the girls' dorms, Amo gets a rude awakening. She wakes up late and after being forced to take a cold shower, she discovers that Butler had hidden her uniform in a cruel prank. Amu eventually found her uniform and joined Tumelo. She asked about Kaya, but Tumelo warned her that he is Butler's girlfriend. The pair then went to watch soccer practice, where Kaya presented Butler with a rose after scoring a goal. Butler then invited him over to her room. However, when Kaya arrived at the dorm, he found her roommate, Amu. The two had an awkward interaction before Butle arrived and kicked her out. The episode ends with the matron asking why she found Amo outside the room whilst Butle and Kaya were making out. Episode 3 picks up where the last one left off with the matron questioning Amo whilst Butle and her boyfriend were trying to get it on in their room. Amo was able to think fast and covered for Butle while she got rid of Kaya. After successfully ushering the matron away, the two girls bonded with Butle giving Amo a makeover as they prepared for a night out with Tumelo Matlate and Kaya. Amo even revealed to Butle that she was still a virgin. The teens snuck out their dorms and made their way to the club where they drank and danced. However, Matlate who isn't the big drinker quickly got sick with Tumelo helping him to the restrooms. Meanwhile, there was a moment of tension on the dance floor with Amo and Kaya coming dangerously close before Butle interrupted them. An embarrassed Amo made her way to the bar where she was approached by an older man who offered her a drink. She declined but the man was persistent, offering Amo some money to leave with him. Amo resisted but the man insisted, grabbing her by the arm. Luckily the party was interrupted by the authorities, giving Amo and her friends an opportunity to make a break for it. They escaped the club and made their way back to school, where all of them except for Amo shared about their toxic fathers. It is then revealed in a flashback that Amo's father murdered her mother, which is why she was not comfortable sharing with the group yet. The episode ends the next morning during assembly, when Amo is invited onto the stage by the principal so she can be introduced. However, we are all left in shock when Amo gets on stage and realizes that their principal is the older man who tried to pick her up at the club the night before. Episode 4 picks up with the revelation that the man who tried to court Amo at the club is the principal of her high school. She tells the rest of the gang, but they don't want to get into any trouble for sneaking out and agree to keep it between themselves. Kaya's academic performance continued to decline with him being given detention and sent to the principal's office where the principal advised him to take his studies seriously, even suggesting that Kaya might have to take a break from soccer. After detention, Butler was angry with Kaya and lectured him for getting detention in the first week of school, but Kaya was too busy locking eyes with Amo to care. The episode ends with the group meeting up again to discuss the principal, who unbeknown to them is lurking close by, watching them. 
Episode 5 picks up with the students of Oliphant's Fontaine preparing for the first game of the year against their local rivals. However, the team plays poorly with Kaya missing a penalty. An embarrassed Butler confronted Kaya about his performance, with the couple getting into an argument and not parting on good terms. Sefako broke up with Tumelo for being too extra, so all the students returned to their dorms in low spirits. Whilst in their dorms, the teens were ambushed with a random search. The episode ends with all the teens' rooms being searched by the teachers and matron respectively. Episode 6 picks up with Matlatse who is selling weed on campus, narrowly surviving the random search. Meanwhile in the girls' dorm, the matron confiscated Butler's sex toy, but the gang becomes paranoid and came to the realization that the principal must be targeting their group with the help of a spy. A paranoid Matlatze was forced to hide his stock, so he buried it on the school grounds with Dumelo's help. The following day, Matlatze finally tried to ask out Amo, but he only succeeded in digging himself deeper into the friend zone. The principal then summoned Amo and Butle to his office where he gave Butle a warning for the sex toy. He then reminded Amo that she has a lot to lose unlike the other girls at the school who are privileged. The episode ended with a revelation as Amo left the principal's office. Another female student went in after Amo who stuck around to eavesdrop and confirmed that the principal is messing around with some of the students. Episode 7 picks up with Kaya and Safako discussing the upcoming mock exams. Kaya can't keep his eyes off Amo, which Safako noticed and encouraged his friend to go for her, but Kaya is reluctant because of his relationship with Butle. The principal, Mr. Mtembu, called Kaya to his office and notified him that he had been suspended from the soccer team until after the mock exams. He also informed him that he will join him in his office during breaks and lunch in an effort to help him study. Dumelo is in a new relationship with a non-binary student named Alex, who he introduces to Matlatse, but Dumelo soon becomes overwhelmed with how clingy they are, with Alex demanding they make their relationship official. Meanwhile, Amo called a meeting with the gang and told them what she saw at the principal's office last week. However, the rest of the gang doesn't believe her, with Kaya especially disappointing Amo by defending Mr. Mtembu. Matlatse on the other hand offered his assistance and revealed to Amo that his mother was also taken advantage of by an older man who left her to raise a child as a teen. The two friends had a breakthrough and the episode ends with them devising a plan to uncover Zintle's affair with the principal. Episode 8 picks up with Matlatse and Amo familiarizing themselves with Zintle who doesn't hide the fact that she dates older men. The two friends devised a plan for Amo to join the netball team. But first, Matlatse taught her a few things in a practice session where sparks flew between the pair as their chemistry continued to grow. Meanwhile, Mr. Mtembu is still on a mission to help Kaya pass his mock exams, relentlessly tutoring him and making sure he doesn't get distracted by his love for football. The principal even used football analogies to help tutor the young man. However, Kaya's teacher taunted him, insisting that the young man will fail while his friends and girlfriend move on to college and university. Alex confronted Dumelo about their relationship, accusing him of ghosting them and demanding once again that Dumelo make his decision. However, Dumelo is still hung up on Safako and could be seen cheering him on during soccer practice. Amo joined the netball team and immediately started training with Zintle, who was very open about her older lover. The episode ended with Zintle revealing to Amo that her lover bought her a new phone and had taken her on a trip to Durban recently. Episode 9 picks up with the school preparing for the annual Freshers' Ball. Tumelo confides in Matlatza about Alex, but Matlatza reminded Tumelo that he had put Sufako under the same pressure to go public. Meanwhile, the results for the mock exams have arrived, and to everyone's surprise and jubilation, Kaya passed with a 62%. The classroom erupted in celebration, and the party continued after class with Sufako and Kaya getting sloppy drunk to celebrate. Matlatza and Amo continue to grow closer, with them agreeing to attend the Freshers' Ball together. However, at the bash, drama unfolded. First, Alex was humiliated when Tumelo rejected him in front of the whole school. Amo then followed Zintle to the bathrooms after she got sick on the dance floor. She questioned Zintle about her affair with the principal, and Zintle exploded, telling Amo to stay out of her business and accusing her of being jealous. The episode ended with the party being stopped by one of the teachers who confronted Kaya for being drunk but the teen caused the scene insulting the teacher before the students scattered from the hall in mayhem. Episode 10 picks up with a commotion in the girl's dorm where Palesa has found a positive pregnancy test. The discovery resulted in the girls pointing fingers at each other. 
but Amu immediately suspected that the test belonged to Zintle. Amu's room then got raided again before Principal Mtembu summoned her to the office, which Amu dismissed as the principal's attempt to intimidate her. However, despite Amu's determination to help Zintle, Matlata warned her that there's not much they can do if Zintle continues to refuse talking to them. Following their humiliation at the Freshers' Ball, Alex officially dumped Dumelo and even accused him of having internalized homophobia. Pearl also gave the students a strong lecture about alcohol abuse. Meanwhile, Kaya showed regret after he disrespected a teacher at the Freshers' Ball, which is now trending on social media. Sefako also expressed his disappointment in Kaya for getting too drunk and bringing heat on them. Kaya apologized to the clerk for disrespecting him and he seemingly accepted the apology. However, Kaya was later summoned to the principal's office where he was suspended. The episode ends with the principal requesting a meeting with Kaya's parents as he hands him the suspension letter. Episode 11 picks up with Kaya returning home following his suspension. We are introduced to his parents and his strict father immediately confronted him about the events surrounding his suspension. Kaya denied any wrongdoing, claiming that the clerk was picking on him in class, which is true, but it doesn't absolve him of his behavior at the Freshers' Ball. While Kaya was at home, his father's abusive nature was evident as he snapped at Kaya for the smallest things, just looking for an excuse to lay hands on him. Back at the school, Amu finally confronted Zintle about the pregnancy test questioning if it was hers and encouraging Zintle to confide in her so that she can help. Following his breakup with Alex, Dumelo went back to Sufako and begged him to take him back, apologizing for trying to force him out of his comfort zone. Sufako however claimed he was not interested, but after a bit more persistence from Dumelo, Sufako said he would consider it. The episode ends with Amo's suspicions being reaffirmed after she sees Zintle and the principal having a tense conversation on campus. Episode 12 picks up with Kaya and his parents arriving at school for their meeting with the principal that would determine if his suspension will be lifted. The teacher he disrespected, Ditlek, joined the meeting and to their credit, Kaya's parents stood up for their son. But the tables turned on Kaya when Ditlek produced social media footage of the incident. Kaya's parents were forced to quickly apologize for their son's actions. Mr. Mtembu ultimately accepted the apologies and agreed to lift Kaya's suspension. However, his father was so furious that following the meeting, he whipped Kaya in front of the entire school as his peers watched on in horror. Meanwhile, Dumelo is still trying to get back with Safak. The former couple met up at their secret spot where Dumelo once again apologized and admitted that Alex was just a rebound. Safako conceded and took Dumelo back but with strict conditions. A determined Amo is still trying to convince her friends that Zintle is pregnant and that Mr. Mtembu is indeed the father. However, her friends are still skeptical and refuse to join Amo on her mission to uncover the principal's predatory ways. Amo then went looking for Zintle, but when she finally found her, the teen was in a bad shape. Amo found Zintle bleeding excessively in her bed after what appeared to be an illegal abortion. Zintle initially refused Amo's help because she was afraid of being expelled. However, Amo eventually convinced her to let her call an ambulance. The episode ends with confusion at the school as the ambulance rushed Zintle to the hospital, with the matron and students questioning a traumatized Amo. Episode 13 picks up in the aftermath of Zintle's incident. The entire school is speculating on who could have impregnated her. Amo is more determined than ever that Mr. Mtembu was the father of Zintle's child and she does her best trying to convince Bukhe of it. Meanwhile, Matlata was still trying to get with Amu, but Tumelo encouraged him to man up and warned him that he's digging himself deeper into the friend zone. Kaya's suspension is over and he returned to school where he tried to stay positive despite his father humiliating him in front of his peers. The students gathered in the hall, but at the end of the presentation, the principal announced to the school that Zintle had sadly died. Following the announcement of Zintle's passing, Matata tried to comfort Amu, who was feeling guilty for not being able to do more. The episode ends with her admitting to Matlatze that her family wasn't perfect, revealing that her father was abusive towards her mother and ended her life, which Amu witnessed herself. Episode 14 picks up following Zintle's death. Her parents have arrived at the school where the students are preparing a memorial service for their daughter. Matlatze tells Tumelo that him and Amo are pretty much an item. However, he might have got the wrong idea because when Tumelo asked Amo if anything was going on between them, she insisted that they were just friends, something which she even reiterated in front of Matlatze. 
casting doubt over the relationship he thought they had. Kaya and Butler discussed Zintler's passing, but he completely lost it after Butler shared Amo's suspicions with him. He immediately went to confront Amo about her suspicions, with the group once again arguing over how viable the allegations are. Kaya continued to be in denial because he looks up to the principal as a father figure. The episode ends with Amo returning to her room, more certain than ever that Mr. Mtembu is to blame for Zintler's death. Butler watched on as her determined roommate vowed to bring down the principal of their school. Episode 15 picks up on the day of Zintler's memorial and the effects of her passing continue to be felt throughout the school. Matlata continued to dig himself deeper into the friend zone with Am, whereas Kaya apologized to Amo for confronting her over the principal. But the two continued arguing over Kaya's defense of the principal and Amo's refusal to leave the matter alone. The students held a beautiful memorial for Zintler, but during the event, Butler witnessed Mr. Mtembu inappropriately touching a ninth grade girl. Following the memorial, Butler shared what she had seen with the rest of the gang and finally committed to helping Amo uncover the principal's sinister ways. Kaya was still reluctant to accept that the allegations were true and insisted Mr. Mtembu was a good man, but Butler was certain about what she had seen. The episode ends with Butle, Amo, Tumelo and Matlatse trying to convince the conflicted Kaya to join them on their mission to bring down the principal. Episode 16 picks up following Amo and her friend's commitment to exposing Principal Mtembu. However, Kaya continues to have doubts that the man he looks up to could be capable of such evil. After getting into trouble, he was sent to the principal's office where he found out that Mr. Mtembu is in a relationship. Kaya went back to his friends to report that the principal had an age-appropriate girlfriend, unsuccessfully trying to convince them to abandon their mission. Meanwhile, Butler approached Lerato to warn her about the principal, but she did not believe he could be a predator. However, Lerato soon came around. She went back to Butler and reported that Principal Mtembu had invited her back to his office after school. Butler then came up with a plan for Lerato to record her meeting with the principal. Little did they know that Kaya had snitched to Mr. Mtembu. The episode ends with Kaya barging into the principal's office, revealing his friend's suspicions and exposing the investigation. Episode 17 picks up with Kaya telling the principal everything, warning him about Amo and her friend's investigation. However, Kaya soon regrets it. Matlata and Amo's connection seem to be back on after she dismissed him as just a friend last time. He finally manned up and asked Amo out on a date, which she accepted. Butler and Amo then initiated their plan to record the principal. However, after Lerato returned from Mr. Mtembu's office, she reported to the girls that they were wrong and insisted that the principal is a good man. The group gathered to listen to Lerato's secret recording, where the principal was on his best behavior, which Kaya rubbed in his friends' faces knowing very well he had betrayed them. Following soccer practice, Principal Mtembu rewarded Kaya with a pair of new soccer boots and revealed to him that the woman he is in a relationship with is Pearl. Unfortunately, Amo was not aware and the episode ends with her taking her suspicions to Pearl, revealing everything she knew about Mr. Mtembu. Episode 18 picks up where the last one left off, with Amo confiding in Pearl about Principal Mtembu's extracurricular activities. However, the rest of the group was not happy with this development, despite Amo assuring them that they can trust Pearl. It would turn out that Amo was wrong and they couldn't trust Pearl because they were all summoned to the principal's office where Mr. Mtembu confronted the group about their investigation and threatened to expel them all. He also revealed to the rest of the group that Amo's father killed her mother, suggesting that she was paranoid and her imagination was running away with her. After the principal allowed her friends to leave, Amo was forced to stay behind in the office where they were joined by her aunt. The principal revealed that Amo had been misbehaving since her first week of school when he caught her drinking in the club. Amo's aunt apologized for her niece which the principal accepted and promised to get Amo some counseling. Amo's aunt then gave her a piece of her mind before leaving, but that wouldn't be the end of it as her friends confronted her for not being honest about her parents and sending them on a wild goose chase. Amo had no defense as even she began to doubt her suspicions about the principal. The episode ends with Butler and Tumelo ending their friendship with Amo, who even rejects Matlatse's efforts to cheer her up, killing whatever connection they had reignited over the last two episodes. Episode 19 picks up in the aftermath of Amo's investigation of Principal Mtembu coming to an end. Her friends have expelled her from the group and she is walking around the school looking miserable. Matlatse was the only one who tried to check up on her, but she once again pushed him away. Following their failed crusade against the principal, 
the group was given a week's detention. But with Amo refusing to take up the principal's offer of professional counseling, Poe tried using the detention as a group therapy session in an attempt to mend the friend's relationship. However, her friends refused to forgive Amo and continued icing her out. Butler was being particularly mean to Amo at every chance she got. The episode ended with Butler and her friends taunting Amo while she tried to go to sleep. Episode 20 picks up with Butler finding out that Kaya was still texting Amo. She confronted Kaya and subsequently forgave him, but that only made her resentment for Amo grow. Meanwhile, Sefako and Tumelo's on and off again relationship continued. Last time we saw Sefako break up with Tumelo after he got caught using Sefako's notes to cheat on a test. Tumelo apologized and once again begged Sefako to take him back, which he eventually did. During class, Amo and Alex were paired together for a project, but Alex was more interested in gossip about Amo and her friend's breakup. Amu resisted, but a persistent Alex eventually sat her down where Amu revealed to them why she broke up with her friends. She even told them about her abusive past and the tragic nature of her mother's death. An empathetic Palisa and Alex committed to supporting Amu and invited her to join their friend group. Amu then returned to her room with more confidence as she refused to excuse Kaya and Butler who were trying to hook up, spoiling their planned evening. While Kaya was visiting Butler, Sefako invited Tumelo over. However, the evening was spoiled when Kaya returned much earlier. The episode ended with Safako scrambling to hide Tumelo under his bed as Kaya knocked on the door impatiently. Episode 21 picks up the next morning in Safako and Kaya's room. Tumelo spent the night under Safako's bed and didn't get to leave until after the boys had gone to the showers. Meanwhile, Butler confronted Amo for not excusing herself the previous night. But Amo stood up for herself, confronting Butler for how nasty she has recently been to her and reminding the head girl that it's her room too. Butler was also surprised to discover that Amo and Palisa were becoming fast friends. She tried to warn Palisa about Amo being a liar but was left stunned when Palisa revealed that Amo shared the truth about her parents. An angry Butler immediately shared the news with the rest of the group. The students of Oliphants then took to the athletics field where they raced against each other. To everyone's surprise, Amu beat Butler in their race, with Butler making excuses for her loss, claiming that she had an ankle injury and even accused Amu of bewitching her. Matlata tried to reach out to Amu, but once again she pushed him away requesting space. An angry Matlata then took his anger out on Tumelo, blaming him for siding with Butler against Amu. However, Tumelo reminded him that he had many opportunities to explore more than a friendship with Amu, but continued to friendzone himself. Kaya, on the other hand, had better luck when he reached out to Am. The episode ends with Kaya making a move on the 10th grader, making her blush as she excused herself. Episode 22 picks up with an announcement by Principal Mtembu that the Valentine's Ball is cancelled. The entire school was not pleased with the announcement, especially the grade 12 students led by Buthe, who was determined to salvage the event. Kaya followed up his interest in Amu, even suggesting that he might be ready to drop Buthe for her. He also caught Safako writing a love letter and made him promise that he'll introduce him to his new girlfriend. Meanwhile, a girl named Tepi introduced herself to Matlatse showing interest, but he was still hung up on Amo, who was quickly moving on with her new friends. Matlatse confronted Amo after they bought weed from him, but she quickly shut him down before joining her friends for her first smoke. If ever Matlatse's place in the friend zone was in doubt, Amo wasn't even moved when Palisa and Alex told her that they could tell Matlatse liked her. Back at their dorm, Matlata confided in Tumelo about how much Amu had changed, but the episode ends with Tumelo advising him to forget about Amu and to give Tepi, who actually likes him, a chance. Episode 23 picks up with Butler's fight to reinstate the Valentine's ball. She made her case to the principal, but he refused. However, Butler returned to the principal's office with yet another passionate plea to reinstate the ball. But this time he accepted after Butler promised that there would be strict stipulations and that the students would be on their best behavior. Once word got out that the Valentine's ball was back on, the students began scrambling for dates. Tepi made an extravagant proposal for Matlatse, who despite not being interested, accepted and agreed to go to the Valentine's ball with her. Meanwhile, Palisa and Alex organized some speed dates for Amu, with a room full of boys and girls interested in taking her to the ball. However, to her friend's disappointment, Amu rejected them all as she continued to crush on Kaya. The episode ends with the desperate Tumelo once again trying to convince her reluctant Safako to take him to the Valentine's Ball. Episode 24 picks up as the Valentine's Ball approaches. Tumelo receives a proposal from a secret admirer who he believes to be Safako. 
ultimately accepting to go to the bash with him. Butler confronted Kaya for not being romantic enough, but my boy made it up to her with an extravagant proposal that had the whole school buzzing. Matlata once again tried to reach out to Amo, but she immediately shut him down and encouraged him to finish what he started with Tippi. It seemed like the dateless Amo wasn't going to attend the Valentine's Ball, but at the 11th hour, she received an invite from a secret admirer. When the Valentine's Bash finally came, all the students were coupled up, but everyone was left shocked when Amo arrived with her date, Safako of all people. A heartbroken Tumelo exited the hall where his real Valentine introduced himself and was quickly rejected. Matata then arrived to comfort his friend. Back in the hall, Safako and Amo had zero chemistry and quickly started doing their own thing. Tumelo confronted a defiant Safako, who once again refused to go public with their relationship, basically telling Tumelo to take it or leave it. Meanwhile, a jealous Kaya confronted Amo as the couple had a heated exchange. The episode ends with Kaya stealing a kiss from Amo as she kissed him back before running off. Episode 25 picks up following the Valentine's Ball. The school is abuzz about Amo and Safako attending the event together. However, Amo can't stop thinking about Kaya and the kiss they shared as the two continue to exchange texts. Kaya confronted Safako about Amo and demanded that he back off. Safako once again reconciled with Tumelo, who agreed to keep their relationship private. Meanwhile, Matlata reached out to Amo again and the two started hanging out. However, Tepi, who Matlata was dating, confronted him for not showing any interest in her, immediately dumping him. Amo began feeling guilty about betraying Butle, so she tried ghosting Kaya, but he was able to confront her in person. The episode ends with Kaya trying to convince Amo to be with him. Episode 26 picks up with Amo admitting to Kaya that she has feelings for him as well, with Kaya inviting her over to his dorm after school. Amo shared the details of her affair with Balisa and Alex, who encouraged her to sleep with Kaya when they meet up in his room after school. Balisa even showed Amo some explicit videos on her phone, which they ended up in the principal's office for. On the eve of Tumelo's birthday, he started a Stockville to fund the celebration. The birthday Stockville gave Matlata the opportunity to get closer to Amo, who admitted that she missed him. However, Tumelo warned Matlata against finding himself in the friend zone again and encouraged him to tell Amo how he feels. Meanwhile, Butle was getting suspicious with Kaya, who she felt wasn't giving their relationship the same energy. Little did she know that his attention was focused on Amo, who visited him after school. However, she made it clear that she wasn't ready to sleep with him. The episode ends with Kaya suggesting they start dating on a trial basis and if they're both feeling it, he promised to dump Butle. Episode 27 picks up in Butle and Amo's room where Kaya had sent a bouquet of flowers to Amo. And it didn't stop there as he gave Amo a promise ring and reiterated his desire to be with her. Dumelo's birthday had finally arrived. After celebrating with Matlata in the morning, preparations for his party began. Amo and Butle reconciled and put the past behind them. And when the party finally started, Tumelo also forgave Amo as the two became friends again. However, now that she's friends with Butle again, Amo refused to continue her affair with Kaya, forcing him to abandon the party. During the party, Matlata took Amo away and finally told him how he feels, leaving her speechless. Meanwhile, Kaya returned to his room, where Safako was preparing a birthday gift for Tumelo. The two went to hang out by the school courts. However, Tumelo decided to leave his party and went to confront Safako in front of his friends. An angry Safako chased him away but arrived in Tumelo's room shortly after. The episode ends with Safako shutting Tumelo up with a vicious slap across the face. Episode 28 picks up in the girls dorm where Butler received a breakup text from Kaya who is now committed to pursuing Amo. News of the breakup quickly spreads around the school, putting Amo in a precarious position of comforting Butle, who immediately suspected that Kaya had found a new girl. Matlata's pursuit of Amo also continued, as he brought gifts to her dorm where she was comforting Butle, who even highlighted what a cute couple the two would make. Amo became overwhelmed with having to choose between the patient Matlata and the assertive Kaya, who she admits she wants to be with. Meanwhile, in the aftermath of being slapped by Sofako, Tumelo was not himself, causing concern for Matlata and Alex. However, a regretful Sefago apologized to Tumelo for hitting him. The episode ends with the couple ultimately reconciling after Sefago presented Tumelo with his birthday gift and promised to never hit him again. Episode 29 picks up following Tumelo and Sefago's reconciliation. Despite getting back together, Tumelo is still uneasy around Sefago. Matlata also finds it weird that Tumelo all of a sudden refuses to share anything about his relationship with Sefago. 
Amo and Kaya have been sneaking around, but she encouraged Kaya to smooth things over with Butle by at least ending things in person. However, Amo was also forced to inform Matlatse that she wasn't interested in anything more than a friendship. Butle in the meantime was on a mission to find the girl she believed Kaya was messing around with, which resulted in her attacking an innocent student in the girl's toilet. The episode ends with Butle confronting Kaya for breaking up with her and declaring that she's done with him. Episode 30 picks up with Alex and Matlatse discussing their concern for Tumelo's recent behavior. After watching an interaction between Tumelo and Safako, Matlatse questioned Tumelo about Safako abusing him. He then confronted Safako in the grade 12 class, where the two exchanged blows before being sent to the principal's office where they were disciplined. Meanwhile, Butler was on a mission to make Kaya jealous, and it almost worked with the former couple briefly making out before Kaya resisted, proclaiming that he wants something real, unlike what he had with Butler. However, Kaya found himself in hot water with Amo after she figured out that he was responsible for sabotaging their investigation into Principal Mtembu. The episode ends with Amo confronting Kaya for snitching on them. The episode 31 picks up where the last one left off, with Amo interrogating Kaya after she figured out he was the one who reported them to the principal. The couple had a few heated exchanges throughout the episode which ultimately led to Amo breaking up with Kaya and returning the promise ring he previously gave her. The couple immediately went their separate ways with Kaya trying to get back with Buche who initially rejected him. Amo on the other hand started reaching out to Matlatse in an effort to make things right between them, surprising him with a gift. Meanwhile, Safako and Tumelo discussed the fallout of the fight with Matlatse. Surprisingly, Tumelo was apologetic, promising Safako that he would be more discreet, even ending his friendship with a disappointed Matlatse and changing his look entirely. The episode ends with Tumelo quitting the sports team to appease Safako. In episode 32, Kaya was busy as he went all out to get Bukhe back presenting her with flowers and the promise ring that Amo returned. With that, the Beyonce and Jay-Z of Oliphant's Fontaine were back together. Upon seeing her ex get back with his ex, Amo went back to Matlatse and demanded that he ask her to be his girlfriend again, which he did and she accepted. Meanwhile, Kaya returned to his room, where he walked in on Safako and Tumelo, who claimed they were studying. The episode ends in Mr. Mtembu's office with Kaya looking shocked after uncovering something on the principal's tablet. Episode 33 picks up following Kaya's discovery in Principal Mtembu's office. He returned to his dorm but was still uncomfortable around Safako after catching his roommate cozying up with Dumelo. However, the two friends were able to have a heart-to-heart -heart where Kaya revealed that he had always suspected that Safako wasn't interested in women and reassured him that it didn't change their friendship. He also warned him against acting insecure with Tumelo in public, suggesting it actually brought more attention to their relationship. Safako later apologized to Tumelo, even suggesting he was ready to go public with him. However, Tumelo was already fed up with what Safako had put him through, finally breaking up with him once and for all. Meanwhile, Matlata is on cloud 9 following him and Amo officially becoming a couple. The entire school was excited for them, everyone except for Kaya, who confronted Amo. However, Amo stood her ground despite Balisa and Alex also expressing how underwhelmed they were with Amo's new boyfriend. The episode ends in the principal's office with Kaya receiving news that Mr. Mtembu had invited a scout to come watch him with the potential of a sporting scholarship. Episode 34 picks up in the aftermath of Tumelo's breakup with Safako. He reconciled with Matlatse and immediately started giving him relationship advice, giving him the encouragement to finally go in for his first kiss with Amo. Meanwhile, Kaya consoled a heartbroken Safako, reminding him that they had a very important soccer game with scouts in attendance. During the game, Matlatse pulled Amo aside in an attempt to finally kiss her, but it was a complete disaster with Matlatse's inexperience showing. The pressure was on as Kaya delivered a game-winning performance in front of the scouts. However, his excitement was short-lived as he immediately rounded up the gang. The episode ends with Kaya revealing that he saw explicit pictures of underage girls on Principal Mtembu's tablet. Episode 35 picks up immediately after Kaya's revelation that the principal is indeed a predator. He further confessed to the group that he was the one that snitched on them to Principal Mtembu. Kaya's confession prompted apologies to Amo from Butle and Dumelo for turning their backs on her. Despite the group being disappointed with Kaya, he convinced them that he could get his hands on Principal Mtembu's tablet. However, his mission failed when the principal caught him snooping. Meanwhile, Matlata was still embarrassed after messing up his first kiss with Amo. However, she approached him and this time she took the lead as they shared a proper first kiss. 
Following his failure to get his hands on Mr. Mtembu's tablet, an apologetic Kaya once again summoned the group to apologize. The episode ends with Kaya suggesting he has a plan as the friends recommit to exposing Principal Mtembu. Episode 36 picks up with the group plotting to steal Principal Mtembu's tablet. Butler was able to get him out of the office but they failed to get their hands on the tablet. Following their latest failure, the group began doubting themselves until Matlata came up with a plan to go public with what they know, suggesting they use Dumelo's social media following to raise awareness around their suspicions. The episode ends with the Big Five standing together live on social media, exposing everything they know about Principal Mtembu and calling for any victims to come forward. Episode 37 picks up following the group exposing Principal Mtembu on social media. The video was trending and the story quickly spreads across the school. However, not everyone was supportive of the group's actions with Safako and Amo's friends voicing their concern for Kaya and Amo respectively. The rest of the school including the teachers were even less supportive and failed to take the allegations seriously or come forward with testimonies. Their day culminated in them being summoned to Principal Mtembu's office. The episode ends as a disappointed Mr Mtembu serves them with notices for a disciplinary hearing where their parents will be required to be present. Episode 38 picks up on the eve of the group's disciplinary hearing. Their families arrived and the hearings commenced with every member of the group sharing their side of the story. Despite the students giving convincing testimonies, Mr. Mtembu was able to explain away all their suspicions, resulting in the immediate expulsion of Amo and her friends. Before leaving, Kaya implored Pearl to go through the principal's tablet. The episode ends with the five expelled students saying their goodbyes to each other. Episode 39 picks up with the expulsion of the Big Five as they each adjust to being back home. Amo returned home where she discovered that her aunt had moved into her father's house where her mother was killed. Her aunt gave her some chores to do and made her babysit her cousins. But upon meeting her old friends, she realized that news of her expulsion from school had quickly spread in KZN as her former friends accused Amo of thinking she was better than them. Meanwhile, Tumelo's father attempted to whip him into shape with some cattle work. But to his disappointment, Tumelo didn't respond well to manual labor under the sun. Matlata returned home to find that his wheat plants had died. With his mother struggling to make ends meet, he had lost the income he was earning selling the weed at school. It is also revealed just how stranded they are, with Matlata's mother admitting she already owes some neighbors and spaza shops. Meanwhile, Kaya's father continued to give his son a hard time, ultimately declaring that if Kaya wants to go back to school, he wouldn't pay for it, forcing him to find a job. The episode ends with Butler back home being forced into prayer and watching on as her father flirts with the members of his congregation. Episode 40 picks up following the expulsion of the Big Five as they continue to struggle with being back home. Amo is haunted by memories of what happened to her mother as her cousins continue to make her feel unwelcome. Kaya's father continues to bully his own son, waking him up with a bucket of water and forcing him to do work around the house to earn his stay. Matlata's situation worsened when he received a call from the scholarship fund requesting his end of term results. He was able to stall but for how long? Butler struggled being back home and having to watch her father cheat on her mother with members from his church. Meanwhile, back at Oliphant's Fontaine, the students were not happy following an announcement of the Big Five's expulsion. A confident principal Mtembu went on to announce that he was taking over coaching for the netball team and will be taking them on a team building trip to Mpumalanga a move which seemed to catch Pearl's attention. Episode 41 picks up with Amo really going through it, and it got worse after her aunt informed her that Amo's father was appealing his conviction and could potentially be back home soon. Matlata returned to Oliphant's in a failed attempt to collect his end-of-term results. He bumped into Pearl, who questioned him about the principal's tablet, as it seemed she had started conducting her own investigation. An emotional bootleg revealed her father's infidelity to her mother, who didn't seem surprised at the revelation. Meanwhile, Dumelo and his father continued to have expectations of one another. His father ignored Dumelo's sassy ways, whilst Dumelo refused to do manual labor and was reluctant to learn how to drive, which would enable him to help more around the farm. To Dumelo's disappointment, his father also revealed his hope for Dumelo to become a big soccer star. Meanwhile, back at Kaya's place, Kaya and his father reached a breaking point, with Kaya challenging his father to a fight. The episode ends with Kaya's father smacking his son as Kaya quickly regrets his actions. 
Episode 42 picks up following Kaya's fight with his father. Mr. Jali gives him a proper lecture, revealing that Kaya's misbehavior is what drives him crazy, when all he ever wanted for him was to go to school and set himself up for a bright future. Meanwhile, Dumelo told his father that he wished to resume his studies, but his father informed him that he would have to wait for the new school year and be forced to repeat grade 10. Dumelo later gathered his father and uncles to officially come out to them. Amu in the meantime was still going through it as she wrestled with the fact that her murderous father may soon be released. Her woes were compounded when she saw Principal Mtembu on social media coaching the netball girls and getting very comfortable with them. Back at Boothley's place, she confronted her mother for not questioning her father's cheating, but was dismissed and quickly enrolled in a new school. Matlatse informed his mother that he failed to obtain his end-of-term results, and after the scholarship fund became aware of his expulsion, his scholarship was terminated. The lecture from Kaya's father must have worked, because he managed to get himself a job at a filling station. But while on break, he spotted his former principal, Mr. Mtembu, in his car with a student. The episode ends with Kaya confronting a shocked Mr. Mtembu in the parking lot. Episode 43 picks up at Kaya's home, where him and his father seem to be getting along as he continues to work at the garage. While Kaya was at work, Principal Mtembu paid him a visit, claiming the student that Kaya saw him with last week was 18. He attempted to bribe Kaya with promises of scouts, but he resisted, telling his former principal how disappointed he was and desperately trying to reach the rest of the Big Five. Butler and her parents continued to go back and forth about her next school, as it increasingly looked like they want her as far from them as possible. Meanwhile, Amo asked to go see her father and initially turned back. However, her aunt did her best to convince Amo to go back and try forgive him. Dumelo then confronted his father for not taking his coming out to them seriously, but Dumelo's father denied having anything against Dumelo's sexuality, calling his son out for being dramatic before ordering him to carry out his chores. Matlata was in a bad mood after losing his scholarship. His mother encouraged him not to lose hope and gave him the little she had so he could go and search for other opportunities online. Eventually, Kaya was able to get hold of the Big Five on a group call and revealed what he had discovered about Mr. Mtembu. The episode ends with the Big Five reigniting their desire to bring down their former principal. However, Amo did not seem as enthusiastic. Episode 44 picks up with Kaya pulling up to Butler's place in his father Freddy's car. The couple went on to pick up Matlatze as the Big Five reunion drew closer. The three met up with Tumelo who arrived by taxi, but Amo could not make it. She returned to the prison where her father was held and finally confronted him for taking her mother away. Her father was not remorseful and instead victimized himself, blaming Amo's mother for his actions. A disgusted Amo told him how he reminded her of Principal Mtembu before disowning her own father and declaring that she would never forgive him. Amo went on to pack her things as she set out to join the Big Five. She parted with her aunt on bad terms as she left her home for what seemed like the final time. Meanwhile, the rest of the group managed to track down the girl who Kaya saw the principal with. However, they were not able to convince her to help them expose Mr. Mtembu. The episode ends with the girl kicking Kaya and Butler out of her home as the Big Five run out of options. Episode 45, the finale, picks up with the confirmation that Kaya indeed stole his father Freddy's car. However, there was no turning back for the group as they reunited with Amo. Amo wasted no time going straight to work. The group returned to Lisa's place where Amo convinced her that Mr. Mtembu was using her. Meanwhile, Pearl's investigation was also underway as she gained access to Mr. Mtembu's iPad. The Big Five and Lisa returned to Oliphant's Fontaine where they made a grand entrance, interrupting assembly and confronting the principal in front of everyone. Despite Mr. Mtembu denying the allegations, Amo spoke well and was supported by Lisa's testimony and Pearl who arrived with evidence on Mr. Mtembu's iPad. The students collectively ushered Mr. Mtembu out of the school where the authorities had arrived to take him to jail. Celebrations broke out as Pearl apologized to the Big Five and notified them that they're free to return to school. Kaya's father even joined in, telling his son how proud he was instead of scolding him for stealing his car. The show came full circle with the Big Five once again going clubbing. The finale ends with Kaya and Amo sharing a kiss under the moonlight after he professed his love to her. What a satisfying finale. Like we predicted, Pearl was the key, and she really had her moment in that final confrontation with Principal Mtembu. Mr. Mtembu's storyline has been completed, and season 2 looks like it's gonna focus more on this little love triangle that Amo finds herself in. 
I think only a term has passed in the show. So if I were to guess, it must be building up to the grade 12's Kaya Butle and Sofako matriculating. This suggests that the show will return for season 2 sooner than later. But I think the show has some very progressive plot points which will appeal and contribute to a lot of people's emotional intelligence. I love how everybody's home situation was wrapped up. Matlata's mom was the real MVP. She backed up her son even after the expulsion and was in full support of the Big Five's crusade against the principal. Kaya and his father's relationship developed beautifully. I actually thought he was going to let Kaya keep the car at the end there. I think it would have been a good touch, but I love how their relationship played out. When the show first started, a lot of people wrote it off and accused it of over-sexualizing high school kids, but it has proven to have substance and many morals we can take from the story. I can't stress enough just how good the writing was and how exponentially better the show got as the story set in and characters developed. It's a wrap for season 1. All credit goes to the production team and the stellar cast of young actors for giving us a great story so far. It's been a pleasure reviewing the show with you guys. We'll be back next season with more reviews. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is ASR for the love of African filmmaking and storytelling.